So we all know that terminals are much more powerful than graphical user interfaces for system administration, especially after you learn some of these shell tricks that I'm going to show you here. They're going to save you a lot of time typing, which is probably the number one thing that people complain about uh, when using the command line. So why don't we start with the number one shortcut that has saved me and so many other Linux users so much time, double exclamation point, or the history command. So this basically reruns the last command that you ran on your shell. Uh, most common use case for this is probably sudo double exclamation point because nothing is more annoying than typing out a long command and then having a terminal tell you that you need root privileges to run it and now you gotta type all that stuff out again uh, with sudo at the very beginning. So you just saw that it ran uh, sudo neofetch, which Obviously, kind of a useless command to run, but we've all been there before where our terminal tells us we need to have root privileges. And if you're just typing out the whole command every time that happens, you're gonna really hate yourself. Now, this shortcut becomes even more powerful when you combine it with substitutions. So let's say that I run the command sudo systemctl status sshd. This is going to check and see if the SSH daemon is running or if SSH is running at all. And as you can see, it's not, it's disabled, it's inactive, it's dead, not running at all. Uh, but let's say that now I want to go ahead and start the SSH daemon. Well, I could just retype out this command, systemctl, uh, what would it be, start sshd? I could do that or a other kind of clever approach would be to use the up arrow key to get the last command and then just uh, modify this to say start instead of status. Uh, or an even more clever approach is to simply do double exclamation point and then do a substitution of the last command. So we're going to change the string status for start. And if I run this, you see the command, uh, this tells me right here the actual command it ran, sudo systemctl start sshd. And uh, why don't I just clear the screen real quick. And then if I run, uh, well, <laughs> I could literally just do it again, right? I could do s and then let's see, start and change that to status. So now you see that it is active, it is running. And then I can stop it with, uh, let's see, it would be status and we'll change that to stop. And then if I run the status command again, you see now it is disabled. Now the history command, it doesn't just work with the very last command that you used. It actually can work with any command that is in your bash history file, uh, just by specifying the line number after the exclamation point. Uh, and in case you didn't know, you do have a bash history file. Uh, it's, it's hidden by default, so just like dot bash history. Uh, usually either in your home directory or maybe it'll be in like your config directory. Uh, but anyway, this is what keeps track of all of your history. So you can see on the very first line um, down here that ls is the first command I've ever run, I guess, since I've been tracking my bash history or since I've last cleared it or whatever. Uh, so if I were to do exclamation point one, it runs ls. Running exclamation mark two is going to run the second, or yeah, the second command that's uh, in my history. Now, if you're like me, chances are you have a very, very extensive bash history file, because uh, I basically just set my history to infinite. So there's thousands and thousands of commands that are in here. And you're not going to know that, say, your second to last command was on line 5,632, right? Like, it's, it's impossible to keep track of that file size. So a better approach is to use negative numbers, which will specify lines that are going up from the end of the file. Uh, same idea as if you wanted to print a number from the end of a list in your favorite programming language, right? So if I do something like uh, exclamation point negative two, that's gonna run the second to last command, which in this case was uh, cd go back a directory, because uh, 
which is also the, what, second command in the list because it's just repeating that same thing again. Um, but you get the idea, right? If I were to do uh, exclamation point minus three, this is gonna do what, an ls? Uh, or no, it's gonna do another uh, back directory. But yeah, you get the idea. Um, and then let's go back into this temp temp folder for the next example. So we're going to look at the lesser known cousin of the uh, history command, which is exclamation point star. So this tells Bash that you want to reuse all of the arguments from the previous command. Okay, so let's say that I create a bunch of files, right? I'm gonna touch file one, file two, file three, file four, and file five, all right? So I just created those five files, uh, and this one was already here. This is gonna come into play in a moment. Now, let's say that I wanna change the permissions of all of those files, right? I could just run chmod 777, uh, you know, on file one and just redo that for every single file. But I want to change the permissions of all of them at once, right? I want to do this quickly. Could also run, or you might think I could run chmod 777 file star. Uh, so this star stands for a wildcard. It basically just means um, whatever comes after the previous part. So this would change every single thing that begins with file in this directory, right? If I didn't have this file, that'd be fine. But this one says, you know, file 12, do not change. So we don't want to change the permissions of that. So instead, what I'm going to do is chmod 777 and reuse the arguments. But actually I can't do this because if you see the last command I ran was ls and I didn't even use any arguments on that. So this is just gonna fail if I run this, like here, I can run that and it says, you know, missing operand after 777. So uh, what I have to do is chmod 777 and let's see now, this looks like it's two commands ago, three commands ago. So I need to do exclamation point minus three, or excuse me, exclamation point yeah, minus three, and then the argument. So now this ran chmod 777 on those five files. And if I list out all the files and their permissions, you see that all of those have read, write, and execute, but the file 12 do not change has been preserved. Now, all of these things are really great for making pretty basic changes to pass commands. And you know, the more that you use them, the more you're gonna build that muscle memory and just get used to using them really quickly. But sometimes you have to make changes to commands that are not that basic. You know, if everything we did was basic, then literally anyone could just become an engineer. So I highly recommend that once you've gotten your company laptop or Let's say if you're working for a bring your own device company and you've gotten your user account on your laptop, make some changes to your bash RC, your dot bash RC, again, located in your home folder that will make your life easier. Uh, so there's a lot that you can do in here. Um, you can do things like uh, define shortcuts, define aliases. So shortcuts would be like for different um, folders. That way you could just very quickly go to it. Uh, or aliases, basically lets you create your own customized command. So you can just type out foo and it can run some big long command that maybe you're gonna run every single day. Uh, LS colors, so this can let you change the color of file types, like when you do an LS, uh, based on, well, based on their file type. So that way you don't have to constantly run the file command if let's say, files missing its extension to figure out what kind it is, right? You can just look at the color. And again, once you've got this memorized, then you can say, oh yeah, this is the color purple. So I know that it's an EXE. This is the color green. So I know that it's a like Python file or whatever. But the main thing I wanted to show you in here is at the top, this set hyphen O VI. This is going to let you use Vim keys to edit commands easier. Now, of course, you need to have VI installed on your system, uh, but 
it already is going to be on pretty much any Linux system. So uh, why don't I just show you this command in action? We'll take a nice long command like this. Uh, I'm in insert mode right now. So if I start typing like I, it's just going to you know create eyes. But if I hit escape, now I'm in normal mode for Vim. So H is going to bring me to the left. L is going to bring me to the right. And I can also go back uh, by doing B to go backwards. I can do W to go forward words. Uh, if I wanted to change something, I can do CW, right? That changes the word. Uh, and then I can just type out whatever I want in there. Uh, you get the idea. If you know Vim already, which really is something that you should learn if you're going to be working with a lot of different Linux boxes because, well, it's already installed, okay? You don't wanna be that guy that's asking the manager if it's okay to install Nano or Emacs on the company server so that you can administer it. Uh, yeah, get comfortable with Vim. And once you are enabling Vim mode in Bash or ZSH, because every good shell is going to support this, you're gonna instantly become three times more powerful on the shell. The junior devs are gonna bow before you. They're going to offer to get you coffee just so that they can be in the presence of your greatness. But that's it for this video, guys. I hope you found it useful. Go ahead and share it with a friend if you did. Like and comment to hack the algorithm and have a great day.